So what stands out to me first and foremost is the fact that our leadership would ask us, all of us, what we think about the future of this campus. That's actually radical. It's pretty revolutionary. And we were met with so much, at first, skepticism, and then uh, real excitement about the um, request to collaborate in the future of Stanford. There are many constituencies on campus that felt that the long-range planning process was an opportunity to be heard in a way they had not been heard before. And so in some sense, it's a grand experiment to try to understand you know, what comes out of a process where we actually engage deeply with each other to try to understand where we're headed. We're all very impressed with the breadth of ideas and also the extent of creativity of the Stanford community. We certainly expected a wide range of proposals. We saw a much wider range than we even expected. You know, better decisions can only come by getting uh, a larger collection of minds at the table to think about them, especially at a place like Stanford, where we have so many talented people um, ready and willing to engage. The four area steering groups were sort of the gateway for the community into the process. People submitted their proposals, and the four area steering groups were the, the place where those proposals were reviewed and organized. We read them all. It was not our job to pick winners and losers and say some of these ideas are better than others. It was really to take a look at the entire body of proposals. Our group is the one that was charged with understanding what concerns were on the minds of the Stanford community as it thought about itself 15 years into the future. If you think about it, Stanford is a residential campus and a vast majority of undergraduate students live here. So do most of the graduate students, many of the faculty, and the rest of us commute into campus. So the steering group on our community was dealing with a range of issues that really deal with the campus as a live and work environment. And those issues ranged from housing, transportation, and affordability, to issues that affect the composition of the community, like diversity and inclusion, and also issues surrounding land use, sustainability, and how we really use the, the campus itself. The world is facing enormous existential problems from climate change to inequality, lots of concerns about polarization and information and the future of our democracy, and making sure that Stanford's resources are harnessed to do what great universities can do, which is to advance knowledge in service of humanity's, uh, humanity's biggest challenges. One of the themes that uh, arose was that of uh, health and wellness and the delivery of health care to not only the community, but to other communities and using Stanford expertise to be a leader in global health care delivery. Stanford has such incredible resources that are readily available to people who are here on campus, but how can we make them available without restrictions of space of campus or time of your actual years on campus? How can we use online learning, satellite campuses, international travel abroad programs, bring students from other institutions here? How do we uh, leverage these new technologies and these relationships to make the amazing education that happens at Stanford available to the whole world? So the issues are definitely difficult, they're challenging, but the point is that the community is saying, you know, we're willing to engage with them and we see ways in which we can make progress on these. I think we're really at the beginning of long range planning. The executive cabinet is gonna come up with a high level vision for where Stanford is going to head over the next decade or so. And then we're all gonna be enlisted in trying to put the specifics into that plan. And that broad plan is actually going to elicit a whole new range of ideas. So the next couple of years, I think, are going to be very exciting, and they're going to require deep engagement from all of us.